So thank you so much for coming. This is a talk that I really love to give. I'm really happy to give. And also, it's just rad to be here in the Caribbean with everyone, uh, with this community that um, is so passionate. Uh, so thank you for being here. And um, I'm really excited about all of this. We are going to talk today about the secret histories of women in computer science, increasingly less secret, which is great, including the women of Python. And about me, some of you know me, uh, but some of you don't. I am a web security advocate at Aptable, uh, which is kind of neat. I get to advocate for best practices. Um, and in this context, I'm here as the editor of Lean Out, which is this uh, compilation of stories from women and gender queer people in Silicon Valley. And I can get books at a discount if that's interesting to people. Oh, and you're encouraged to live tweet this talk or put it on Instagram or wherever. My handle is Elizabeth. Uh, please make me look good. But <laughs> or if you don't, that's your prerogative, actually. Um, so I wasn't going to include Ada Lovelace, and we'll go over really fast. But I think like, we all know that women were really important in the early days of computer science. Like, we all know this. Um, and Grace Hopper and Ada Lovelace are these really recognizable names. Uh, and then there are so many other women. You have the Harvard computers in the 1800s, also unfortunately known as Pickering's Harem. Um, and their names are here. Margaret, Molly, Edith, Annie, Florence, Evelyn, Grace, Arville, Johanna, Alta, Mabel, and Ida, um, all more or less, you know, forgotten by the people who wrote articles like this, the E-Gang. Um, so you've got, you know, Linus Torvald and my friend Gene Hoffman, a bunch of other men who founded companies, and they were given a lot of credit for developing, like, computing and developing the internet. As I said here, um, there were a lot of women who've been essential but they've really been erased from our narrative. This is one of the clearest examples for me. I guess the New York Times isn't considered so venerable by everyone these days. Um, New York Times has had a bad year, I think. Um, but New York Times is considered to be, you know, like a very reputable, upstanding publication. And the author of this particular piece is a Pulitzer Prize winner. So, you know, high expectations. Um, and David wrote this article saying non-ironically in a very straightforward way, and you can look it up and see the whole thing, that men invented the internet. And not just any men, men with pocket protectors, men who idolized Mr. Spock, cried when Steve Jobs died. Nerds, geeks, give them their due. Without men, we would never know what our friends were doing five minutes ago. This piece was published very non-ironically by the New York Times. Um, so this was, you know, where we were starting off. And the Python community also has been insufficiently historically accurate. How do I say this in a polite way? This list is just terrible. Like, screw being polite. Um, and thank you, uh, Thursday, for alerting me to this. Oh. Um, so this list includes, like, famous people mostly men, but then even the list of not famous people, right? Like, it's still also just men. Like, these aren't even, like, the famous or important people. This is a great opportunity to just include everyone. Um, and so there's a lot of work that we could do to be more historically accurate. And, like, accurate attribution matters. Uh, and I guess I could talk a little bit about why, but I think we all kind of natively understand why, like why we don't want to misremember history, why we don't want to attribute things incorrectly, and why we don't want to have the mistaken idea that white men are the only people who build interesting and important things, um, and the only people who can be role models. Um, and it came to my attention just how untrue this was, and it was a surprise for me, because I'd also kind of bought into, you know, like I'm almost 40, so I grew up at a time where the role models really were older white men, and I just didn't know any of this stuff. So I'm very excited that actually women were so instrumental in building the internet. You've got 
Sandra Lerner, who co-designed the first Cisco router, that's a big deal. And Judith Estrin with TCP IP, come on in, thank you. Um, you've got Nicole, Nicola, I think I, I misspelled, it should be an A, not an E, thank you, autocorrect. Pello wrote the first browser that could run on any device. Now, this is a really big deal. Like, the first browser that could run on any device. There's a very active debate on Wikipedia over whether Pello even deserves a page. Like the, and, and there are many who say that uh, Pello should not be there. And indeed, um, the photo that is used for Pello and Pello's work is really just one of Tim Berners-Lee. Like, can't she even get her own photo? Um, and Radio Perlman um, has actually chosen to be less recognized, but maybe that choice is because of all the reasons why, you know, like we see what happens to women who stand up and take credit for their work. Um, and that's unfortunately, like, sometimes a difficult choice to make. So I couldn't find a photo of Glenda Schroeder, so I just used Tim Berners-Lee. <laughs> um, Schroeder is noted for implementing the first command line user interface shell um, and publishing one of the first research papers on electronic mail systems. Um, so like the TLDRs, you know, women have been really important, but because um, we didn't document their work at the time with like great enthusiasm and vigor, um, and because other people stepped up to take credit for their work, um, wink, wink. <laughs> we end up in this situation where you get, I can scroll back, where you get this and you get this. You know, so let's try and be accurate. It matters. We're starting to do a better job now. Like there's a really big movement of like best-selling books and movies that are going back and documenting people who did really important, incredible work that maybe wasn't as known at the time, Elizabeth Smith Friedman. This book now is best-selling, The Woman Who Smashed Codes. She was a pioneer cryptographer, like total badass. My cryptographer friends are like obsessed with her. And Katherine Johnson, yeah, it's cute. Uh, Katherine Johnson um, and the human computers of NASA. Some of you may have seen Hidden Figures. Um, so I'm really excited that like this is happening. There's also a project, the ENIAC Programmers Project. I actually hadn't heard of this until I did more research this morning. I was like, oh, I have time. Let's make the talk better. Uh, and that's now documenting these women, uh, the women who programmed the first electronic digital computer. They are getting a film. Like, why didn't I learn about these folks in school? So with that in mind, I'm like really excited to talk about some of the people in our community because their contributions may seem really obvious to us now, but like let's cement this and celebrate it and like not be confused about what they're doing. Um, so we're smiling because we know Carol. Uh, Carol is a tremendous contributor as a Python software develop software foundation fellow and former director. Uh, just so much I can say co-organizes PyLadies in San Diego, San Diego Python, is, I believe, a keynote speaker here. And so I wanted to not only just note that, like, there are women and gender queer people and that they exist, because, you know, like, that's all a little bit insulting. Like, of course we're here and of course we exist, but I wanted to talk a bit about their work and their insights, and so I did these short interviews asking them like what they're excited about with Python in 2018 or what challenges they see, and advice for newcomers. Because um, in some ways, I'm kind of a newcomer to the community, so I want, I want advice, but I think all of us could use them. Uh, and Carol said, personally, I think we have barely scratched the surface of how Project Jupiter will impact education in the coming years. The open standard allows many different computer languages to be supported. This is exciting. And as for advice, Try to be kind, be humble, help others along the way, contribute to the ecosystem of Python libraries beyond the core language to build your skills. Uh, and it's the success of the ecosystem that feeds back into core development. Um, and Carol's here, if you wanna say hi, it'll be like as seen on TV. 
And Olga is now chair of biology and bioinformatics at SciPyCon and doing some very interesting work in the scientific community um, and said that she's excited about NumPy and Jupyter deciding to push the scientific community into the future and support only Python 3 in their future releases. There's a lot of awesome things in Python 3 that many scientists are missing out on. Um, and there can be a bit of a stigma around being like feminine in the scientific community, which is one reason why I'm wearing pink, um, but also why like I love how Olga is like wearing dresses and these fun outfits in many of her photos. I respect that. I think it's, that's a good role model for me. I, I was very outspoken for a long time about downplaying my femininity in tech because I felt like I had to. Um, and as for advice for newcomers, the Python community is warm and welcoming. Lightning talks are a good way for a new person to get in. And fixing documentation is an awesome way to get into an open source project. And if you're confused by a particular wording, then probably a lot of other people are too. We could all use better documentation. Uh, and Lindsay, um, I wanted to include Lindsay because I'd been learning a lot uh, from Lindsay's Twitter about accessibility, and Lindsay has specifically been doing a lot in the Python community. Um, and I thought that that was important, like noting people who are specifically making an effort to contribute to Python and to this community here. Um, for inclusion of disabled people, a lot of conferences aren't captioning their videos when they post them up on YouTube, let alone having live captioning. And a lot of venues aren't wheelchair accessible and speakers throw around words like crazy. And as for what's exciting in 2018, the amazing growth in Africa of Python, and specifically around Django like Django Girls. Africa is very much a place to watch for Python. Uh, and I saw this as I was looking up, trying to figure out like who are the people in the community who I want to make sure that I'm aware of and that I'm talking about. Um, and my hope is that I'll get in touch with more people in Africa, so the next like, iteration of this will include them. And if anyone like, would like to do introductions or has names to suggest, please let me know, because uh, there, there's so much happening there, it's very exciting. And uh, uh, actually, am I going to mispronounce her name? You know when you've only seen something written? It's Ava, thank you. Um, Ava says, uh, I love the inclusivity and kindness of the community. Every time I attend a local event or go to a PyCon conference, I feel motivated and inspired. My advice to those getting started in the Python community is to attend events and network. If face-to-face -face interactions are not your thing, I suggest joining a couple mailing lists or the IRC channel, old school. Also a great way to meet Pythonistas and Ava is Director of Operations for the Python Software Foundation. Lorena is a member of the board for NumFocus, the umbrella organization providing fiscal scholarship for some of the most prominent Python libraries in scientific computing and data science. And appropriately says, the challenge we must solve is securing the needed support for open source projects that provide foundational infrastructure for national R&D. And Marietta, uh, who is now a Python core developer, which is exciting. Um, and Marietta does so much, it's like I'm going to try and say all of it. Co-organizer of Vancouver Pi Ladies and Pi Cascades Conference, contributes to Python documentation, Python Developer's Guide, Python Core Workflow, Python.org, and on and on. Uh, and um, really wants everyone to know about her tutorial at PyCon Build a GitHub Bot Workshop. It will be in Python 3.6. Um, can't wait to share and teach others about it at PyCon. And now I like really want to go to PyCon and take this like build a bear, build a GitHub bot workshop. And to newbies in Python, the truth is, even after many years of programming, I still feel like a newbie, and it's okay. You probably won't get good at it right away. Don't give up. The good thing is Python is not just code; it's also a community. The community can help you. Uh, be part of it, participate, and contribute. And to Women in Tech, please stay. We need all of you here. Um, and I always run through this, um, and I knew that I would do that here, and I thought that that's okay. Um, so I wanted to see if anyone had suggestions for people who like they think should be like noted and included.
Ah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, what are, do you know their names? Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Like, I think I'm really excited to do this talk, but then I'm very aware of the people who aren't yet on there um, and should be, which is a lot of people. But um, I think, it, Heidi, you were the one who said, like, it's better to do, like, to just start this process. Yeah. Yeah. We can only add stuff already. Great. Yes. Uh, any other suggestions? Oh, that web page was up this morning. It needs to be updated, which is an issue. But nonetheless, like, we, when we look to see who are the important people in our communities, you know, we're mostly finding resources that are listing men. Um, and hey, I can put up a web page and start listing more people. Um, so it's that easy to fix, but we have to do it. Yeah. Any other suggestions or a Q and A? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, the cryptographer. Yes. Of course. Right. No, but you know, women are always noticed in the context of like, do you have a man? You know, what does he do? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe the next generation will be different. Um, nice. Thank you. Don't me. And Kojo. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate your uh, playing secretary while I uh, play speaker. Yes. For twisted. twisted, cool. Wow. Uh, and any uh, Q and A? Any questions? Yes. That would be a really good idea. Um, so I had done this talk previously as a 10-minute lightning talk. This is the first time doing it in a larger format um, and starting to kind of take seriously doing this as a like bigger project. Um, so yeah, and I'll take suggestions on like if you have thoughts on the best format. Otherwise, I think something where people can submit and then I'll review it makes sense just to prevent trolling. That's actually a great place. They do a beautiful and job. They that site very well. That's lovely. Yeah, that site is um, well kept. Yes. Well loved. <laughs> uh, any other Q and A? Any other questions? Yes, please. You can say you can say the Dominican Republic is a beautiful country, but we have our problems with um, women in color. Surprisingly, what would you say to those women that want to, you know, break those things and say we can? Because I know a few women in my university where I where I study that feel that feel like pre uh, in pressure because all of these men uh, which say things about women in the same uh, WhatsApp groups that they are? They, do you say things that are not really quite OK? What would you say to those women? Uh, you're saying how would we encourage the women? Exactly. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's helpful for them to see role models. Like, that meant a lot to me. Um, I wanted to be a venture capitalist many years ago. Uh, I was still very young. And um, someone showed me a page of, like, 
what venture capitalists look like and said, look, there are no women there. Like, you can't do this. And I didn't know why there were no women, but I figured, like, I'm probably not going to be the first. I was very shy when I was young. Um, and so I think, like, the first thing is showing that there are role models. I think that's really helpful. But then, you know, like, having events where people try and encourage them more directly is helpful. Yeah, the Django Girls event yesterday. Uh, any other? Yes, in the back. Uh, uh, yes? Okay. You get in, um, you try to get into the community, and you see all these people that are like, why are women here? Like, they directly say that. Yeah, they say it. They do. They do. It's true. I think that people don't realize how much like women have been kept out. I guess we need that too. We need environments with yeah. the yeah. set the and space. Then you all the way yeah. when I was in college and um, the comp side department was really like 50 50 um, and then I went to everyday health and it was close to 50 50 like I was in tech like in the 90s and 2000s before it was super cool and it was like just us nerds like I never felt like I was kept out it was like there were like 10 nerds in a room like if they would be happy to make it 15 nerds in a room it was, it was like I never felt like like, people didn't want me there because I was going to take some cool job or something. You know, like, maybe that was happening. I mean, we see that, like, things were difficult for the women who were very prominent. But, like, I remember feeling welcomed. And then that changed very dramatically when, like, Y Combinator came in, like, doing what they do. And, like, like people started lionizing Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. Like there was this period of time where the media started lionizing these young white men and like Paul Graham and John Durr. The reason I brought my book is I have like pages and pages where I can read the stupid things people have said, like if anyone's interested. So there's this moment from like 2000, I don't know, 10 maybe, where maybe earlier where like the portrayal of who deserve to be in tech and who deserve to be a nerd or called a nerd just started to shift and I remember things just feeling really competitive. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's a very American-centric list, and we could fix that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, thank you for noting that. So I guess, like, we can uh, let you all go so you actually get a break in between this and the next thing. But um, thank you so much for coming. And if anyone wants to stick around, I'll hang out here. Um, and I can read you selections of people saying stupid things. Or <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs>